the much the much anticipated conclusion of the YouTube downloader series. Again, my apologies for taking so long to conclude the series due to some logistical changes of my setup. This has taken a little bit longer than I would have liked to get to, but hopefully you will see much more content uh, in the future coming out on this channel. And part of that content is me wrapping up some loose ends, one of them being the fifth part of this video series, which again, for the comments that have requested this part, I apologize it's taken so long to get here, but let's uh, better late than never, I suppose. Further ado, let's get right back into where we were from part four. And just to recap a little bit, we had this helper class, which was responsible for making some of the content that we got from the uh, YouTube stats grabber a little bit more friendly to look at. For instance, <clears throat> this function here removes any of the content that is a space and replaces it with an underscore and just normalizes everything by converting the entire name of the string, which in this case is the title of the video that we apply it to, to lowercase. We also want to extract the ID. So at the end of a URL, when you watch something on YouTube, there's a series of characters. That is the unique ID that corresponds to that video. So we have a function that is responsible for uh, essentially capturing that from the URL that we give it. And in the main YouTube stats class, just to refresh, we have this these two uh, variables that we define in our constructor. One actually goes out and gets the URL that we construct in the main part of our program, gets the JSON that corresponds to that request, and then we store the result of that JSON in this uh, data variable, which we then use in, in this class that we've created. So one of the things that we have is just something that prints out the data. If we want to take a look at what the JSON looks like, that's what we have there. We also have some things that are responsible for getting specific items out of the JSON. So for instance, the JSON is formatted uh, kind of as a, as a multi-level list in Python. So if we drill down far enough in the JSON, so items, the first element of items, snippet, and the title corresponds to the title of that video for the JSON that we're parsing. And likewise, the entire thing with the exception of description being replaced with title gives us the description of that video. So the content on that particular video, if we were to go to that URL, we, we can extract both the title and the description of that video. And then if you recall what we have here, it's kind of the main loop of our program. We go through the content, the content being the uh, list of links. So we have this, let me just pop this open here. I have a link file, which is just a CSV, very simple CSV file, which just has five YouTube links for YouTube videos that can be found on my channel. All of these are just comma separated links. Uh, you can see the IDs are the last parts of this. So this portion here is the ID for this video, likewise for the following. And what we have is we just have this very simple script that opens up the CSV file, reads the lines, and then I just do a little bit of pre-processing here to get rid of the uh, commas. And then in the main loop, we go through, we actually construct uh, a URL from those IDs. And then we also uh, construct this URL here, which allows us to interface with the Google API console and um, get the JSON data from this API and then get the relevant pieces of information that we actually care about that we're interested in, namely the title, the description, and in this video, what we'll see, the actual video itself that we'll download um, and some other things. So let's go ahead and get started with that. So we do have the ability, or we, we have made use of the functions that we wrote before to get the title, to clean up the title a little bit, removing the uh, spaces and whatnot with underscores, and then also the description. So the title and the description we've gotten from the JSON uh, content. And then what we wanna do now is we wanna go ahead and let's just say write the titles uh, to it or write the descriptions to files. So what I'd like to do is I'd like to create a file that is the name of the video underscore description dot txt and in that file in that txt file I want the description of that particular video to be stored. So let's go ahead and do that. So I'm going to get rid of this print statement and I'm going to say with open uh, I'm going to do a functional string and I'm going to say title. So this is going to be dynamically um, you know, interpreted within this functional string, underscore description.txt. So this is going to go ahead and create a, a file, a text file, where the first part of that prior to the underscore is the title that we've extracted from above. 
And then the rest of it is just letting me know that it's a description for that particular video. I'm gonna run a, have the command be write, so W, and we'll say we'll wanna write that as F. And then all I'm gonna to wanna to do here, since we're in a loop, is I'm just going to go ahead and write the description to a file. So I'm just gonna go ahead and write that description. Run that, let's just go ahead and make sure that we have what we need here. So I've run it, and in the current working directory in which this script is being run, we have these text files which were just generated. And you can see that if we look at them, it's the name of the, so let me just do a rename here, it's the name of the file itself, and then underscore description. And again, here we have the name of the particular uh, title of the video that was downloaded, underscore description. And if we double click on any of these, and we take a look at what we have inside, we have the description of that particular video. So for this one, this title of this video was Regression in Python and TensorFlow Part 1. This is a video on my channel. And then this is the description for that particular video. So it's gone ahead and grabbed that description and stored it into a text file. So the next thing that I want to do is I want to not just store the uh, text file for the description, but I also want to go ahead and download the video itself. So what I'm going to be doing for that is I'm going to be making use of this PyTube module in Python. If you don't already have this installed, you can go ahead and install it using pip. So you just go to a command line, say pip install PyTube. And then if you run that, it'll install it on your machine for whatever version of Python you're running. I've already got it installed, so I'm not going to run that particular command. Once you have that installed, you should be able to just import it like I'm doing here. So from PyTube, import the class YouTube. And if I go down here to the bottom of the file, in addition to writing these description files, I also want to download the video. So let's go ahead and use PyTube to do that. So the way we can do that is we can say, let's say yt stats. So this is an object from our uh, class that we wrote here. Let's go ahead and say dot download video. So we haven't written this function yet, but we're going to go ahead and write it. I'm just kind of writing how I want this function uh, the function call to look like. So in download video, I want to pass it two things. The URL of the video I wish to download, and then also the title. And we'll see how we're going to make use of uh, both of these parameters in this function. So now let's go ahead and create this download video function in our YouTube stats class. So if I go up here, let's go ahead and create a new function that's part of this class called download video. And it's a member of this class, so we'll give it self. And of course, we need to give it the other parameters as well, namely the YouTube URL. So the YouTube URL, this is a type string. And then we're also going to give it the title. Title is also going to be a type string. So in this function, it's just going to be a call to PyTube. And we imported the YouTube module from PyTube, as you saw there. We're going to be making use of that to download the actual video. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to say YouTube and then I'm going to feed it the URL of the video that I want to download, which is passed into that function. And I'm going to say dot streams dot first dot download. And I can actually specify what name I want it to download. If I don't give anything in this function here, this download uh, function, it's just going to kind of generate an automatically generated name for the file name. But I actually want to give it uh, a name. And that name I want to give it is the title. So I'm going to go ahead and say file name equal to title, which again is this other argument that we passed into this function here. So now we've already gone ahead and written this function down that actually calls the class function that we just wrote. Run this and make sure that it actually downloads the videos that we think it's going to download. So we'll say write and then python part5.py. We'll go ahead and run this. Uh, we won't see any output. It'll just take a little bit of time. But in the meantime, what I'll do is I'll open this up. You can already see it's downloaded one of the videos here. So this video that corresponds to this description, and we see that a new file has been populated in this folder. It's working on the second one. So it'll keep chugging along like this. So if we go ahead and open this up, we should see my video that's been downloaded. And indeed, this is just uh, one of the videos on my channel, which is the regression in Python and TensorFlow. I have my volume down, so you didn't hear any uh, sound there. But it's gone ahead and downloaded, I think, all of the videos there. And if we go back to the terminal, uh, it's completed its processing, and that is that. Of course, you could have a much longer links file. You could do this for a whole bunch of different reasons. Uh, for me personally, like I said, this was kind of scratching my own itch. I just wanted to make a script that allowed me to back up some of my own content uh, and just keep track of it um, just for, for my own purposes and store it on some external hard drives. So I hope that video was helpful for you. I hope you can find a way to make use of this 
uh, kind of for your own purposes. And again, my apologies for taking so long to get to the fifth part of this series. And I want to thank all the viewers again for their patience and for, um, you know, just being patient with me and uh, helping me along. And I, I hope to continue to make more videos now that I've got a little bit more stability here on the YouTube creation side. So thanks again, and I'll talk to you in the next video.